Good morning, Hope Fellowship family and friends, and welcome to another Sunday service here at Hope Fellowship, the Victory Center. Listen, we know that you could have went anywhere else, worshiped anywhere else virtually, but we thank God that you chose to stop by the virtual house of Hope Fellowship. Listen, we have a great and I'm not just saying great because I was a part of it. I'm saying we have a great service. I mean, all of our services are great because we talk about Jesus. But today we're going to talk about the birth of Christ, the reason we're here, the reason for this season. And so, listen, I could think of no better way uh, than to end 2020 than to talk about his miraculous birth and to sing about it, too. Now, we're not singing, you know, those normal Christian, you know, Christmas songs, those, you know, Jingle Bell Rock and Santa Claus is a black man. We're not talking about that today. OK, we're going to talk about Jesus, Emmanuel, the King of King, the Lord of Lords. And I am excited to talk about it. Listen. We have a great service. We have some of, the some of the best singers in Daytona right here in the house, of course, with the baddest band in the land. So let me stop bragging about them and talk about Jesus. Listen, we are going to talk about him and everyone needs to know. Everyone needs to hear. So grab everyone in your house, every living, breathing creature. Fight over the dog, Pearl the cat, have them sit, give them some snacks, a bone, some little meow mix, and have them sit because every ear needs to hear this story. Every ear needs to hear this story. So let me pray so I can get out the way so we can get into the service because I'm excited. I'm very excited. Let's go ahead and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day, Lord God. Thank you for Jesus, God. Thank you for sending your son, Lord God, to us, Lord God. Thank you for his miraculous birth, because we know without him, there could be no healing. Without him, there could be no deliverance. Without him, there could be no breaking of the chains, Lord God. So thank you right now, Lord God, that it is said and it is done in Jesus' name, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for every viewer that's watching right now, Lord God. We pray a special blessing upon their lives, Lord God. Touch them, Lord God, where they need to be touched. Heal them where they need to be healed deliver them where they need to be delivered lord god break every chain lord god i pray that you uh would exceed their expectations lord god so that they can know you are the true and living god that you didn't send your son here in vain lord god but you sent him as an example lord god so we thank you and we lift you and we love you lord god thank you for allowing us to experience Jesus, Lord God, in every avenue of our lives, Lord God. We pray that you continue to touch the, the people that right now need a healing, Lord God. We pray that you continue to be in the midst of our services, Lord God, in the midst of our homes, Lord God, when we drive back and forth on the highways and byways, Lord God. We pray a special blessing for our pastor, Lord God. Continue to teach him, Lord God, reach him so that he can reach and teach this your people. These and other blessings we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. So if you haven't already, okay, you had time, go ahead and like, comment, and share. Okay, make sure that you subscribe to our YouTube channel. And we look forward to seeing you in the house soon. But if we can't, we look forward to seeing your face in the virtual space. God bless, God bless, and enjoy the service. Many of us think of Christmas as a season of light. But the truth is, the birth story of Jesus Christ, the King, is filled with darkness. Jesus, the light of the world, according to Isaiah, was the light that was coming into the world to a people shrouded in darkness. It was an atmosphere of gloom, of anguish, and contempt. Yet, remembering that the light of Christ came in the darkness of night, gives us hope that God can still pour light into our hearts and shine light into our lives at any moment. No matter how dark it may be, no matter where the darkness comes from, Jesus is the light who enlightens everyone. So rejoice, the Emmanuel has come, not only for Israel, but for all who love his appearing. His name is Christ. He is the King. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would one day walk on water? 
older Mary did you know that your baby boy would save our sons and daughters did you know that your baby boy has come to make you new this child that you delivered will soon deliver you Mary did you know that your baby boy would give sight to the blind man Mary did you know that your baby boy has come a storm with his hands did you know that your baby boy has walked where angels joy and you've kissed your little baby and you've kissed the face of God Mary did you know Did you know that your baby boy was heaven's perfect lamb? Did you know that your baby boy is heaven's perfect lamb? And the sleeping child you're holding is the great I am. Mary, did you know? Some shepherds were in the fields outside the village guarding their flock of sheep. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terribly frightened, but the angel reassured them. Don't be afraid, he said. I bring you good news of great joy for everyone. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born tonight in Bethlehem the city of David. Suddenly, the angel was joined by a vast host of others, the armies of heaven, praising God. Glory to God in the highest heaven and peace on earth to all whom God favors. Oh, come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord.
when Quirinius was governor of Syria, Caesar Augustus issued a decree for a census to be taken throughout the entire Roman Empire. Consequently, all persons, men, women, boys and girls, had to travel to their ancestral homelands to be accounted for. Joseph and his now extremely pregnant fiance Mary were no exception to Caesar's decree and had to make the tedious journey from the Galilean town of Nazareth all the way to Bethlehem in Judah. Joseph made every effort to secure comfortable lodging in anticipation of this miraculous virgin birth. However, there were no guest rooms available in the inn and Mary had already gone into labor. Pressed for time, Joseph set up temporary lodging in the rear of the local motel where the animals took shelter. And that is where Mary gave birth to our Savior, Jesus Christ. It was a cool yet clear evening. The stars were shining all around. That night, God's angels were freed to bring glad tidings of comfort and joy to the shepherds and all that would hear. When the angel choir took the shepherds about, told the shepherds about the birth of Christ, they talked it over amongst themselves, saying, Let's get over to Bethlehem as fast as we can and see for ourselves what God has revealed to us. They left running and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger. Along the way, they told everyone they met what the angels had said about this child. All who heard the shepherd were impressed and astonished. However, Mary kept all of these things to herself, holding them dear, deep within her heart. Come on, put your hands together.
About that time, the Roman Emperor Caesar Augustus ordered a census to be taken throughout the empire. Everyone had to travel to his own ancestral hometown to be accounted for. So Joseph went from the Galilean town of Nazareth up to Bethlehem in Judah for the census. He went with Mary, his fiancée, who was with child by the Holy Spirit. She was obviously pregnant and due for delivery at any moment. To no avail, Mary and Joseph sought out many safe places to lodge and deliver the Christ child. All local inns and motels in Bethlehem were full. They tried one last inn, but there was still no room. And so they made a birth room for Jesus in the barn stall of a local motel using a hog's trough as a bassinet, hay as a blanket, animals as company, and strips of fabric as swaddling clothes. Twas a humble beginning for the king of glory who would one day set us all free.
listen, can we do it like this? Hey, so when I play for you, play my best for you. Pum 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 pum, yeah. Can I play for you? Play my best for you. Pum 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 pum, I stand before you with my drum. And so it was, as the angel choir withdrew into heaven, the shepherders talked it over saying, let's get over to Bethlehem as fast as we can and see for ourselves what God has revealed to us. They left running and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger. Seeing was believing. They told everyone they met what the angels had said about this child. All who heard the shepherders were impressed Mary kept all of these things to herself, holding them deep, dear, dear, deep within her heart. The shepherders returned and let loose, glorifying and praising God for everything they had heard and seen. It turned out exactly the way they'd been told. Oh, whatever, whatever, 
Jesus was born in Bethlehem Village, Judah territory. This was during Herod's kingship. A band of scholars arrived in Jerusalem from the east. They asked around, where can we find and pay homage to the newborn king of the Jews? We observed a star in the eastern sky that signaled his birth. We're on pilgrimage to worship him. Then the star appeared again the same star they had seen in the eastern skies. It led them on until it hovered over the place of the child. They could hardly contain themselves. The Holy One had been born and they celebrated this monumental event. They were in the right place at the right time. Oh, holy night, the stars are brightly shining. It is the night of our dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error pining till he appeared and his soul felt his worth a thrill of hope the weary world rejoices for yonder breaks a new and glorious morn. Oh, fall, fall on your knees. Hear 
the angels' voices all night divine all night when Christ was born all night divine all night all night all night At once, the angel was joined by a huge angelic choir singing God's praises. Glory to God in the heavenly heights. Peace to all men and women on earth who please him. You see, when God had a message for Mary, he sent an angel to deliver it. He had a message for Joseph. He sent an angel to him as well. One recipient, one angel. But on the night that Jesus was born, there wasn't one angel, but a host of angels. Because Jesus wasn't to one person, but to all people. Who would imagine that this sweet baby boy would grow up to be not only the king of the Jews, but the savior of the world? This wasn't just any child, but he was the Holy One bringing life and light to all. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Jesus has a name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee must bow, every tongue must confess that he is Lord forever, Jesus.
you know Jesus. Let's just call him one more time. Everybody call him Jesus. 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 Wonderful Jesus. Jesus. We love to call him. Jesus. He's our friend. Jesus. We can depend on him. Jesus. 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 Whoa. Jesus. Call his name. Jesus. Come on, help us call him. Jesus. Jesus. Has he saved you? Jesus. Has he delivered you? Jesus. Has yes. he set yes. you free? Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. Say glory. Oh, oh, glory. Jesus. Glory. Glory. Glory to the new. One more time. Say And give him some praise, everybody. Come on and give Jesus some praise. If you're glad that he was born of the Virgin Mary, came the, into the full, fullness of this world that we might be saved. Uh, we are so appreciative to God for God's grace and his mercy. I pray uh, today that you have heard the Christmas story through song. It is amazing the, the various ways that God has given us to be able to tell the story. And I could have told it through a sermon, but not everybody is always reached through sermonic ministry. Sometimes it is the melodic, harmonious sounds of music, the euphonious sounds that are emitted from the instruments and from these melodious voices that we have heard today that have pricked our hearts, reminded us of the, the beauty of Christmas in the middle of the burden of the darkness. It's been a dark time, and it is a dark time for many. There are many who are celebrating Christmas this year who have lost loved ones. There are many this year who, in the midst of our celebration, can't gather with family, and then there are others who are in hospitals fighting for their lives. But in the midst of this, we have hope because Jesus is the light of the world, the light that shines in darkness, and today, I want to offer you the opportunity to receive Jesus as your Lord and as your Savior. He was born of the Virgin Mary, the seed of the Holy Spirit, came into this world for no other purpose than to save us. Wow, born for the mere fact that he had to die. So his death and his birth come together in this moment for us. We, we celebrate his birth so that we can honor his death and so that we can live in the power of the resurrection. And so today, I want to offer Christ to you. I want to offer you the opportunity to receive Jesus into your heart. Yes, baby Jesus, but yes, also the Jesus whom at 33 years old was taken up Golgotha's hill, nailed to a cross, gave his life for me and for you. Today, I want us to pray this prayer of salvation together. And if you've prayed it for the first time today, or if you're rededicating your life to Christ, I promise you, if you've prayed this in sincerity, if you've confessed this and believed it in your heart, then you are saved. Let's pray together. Dear God, I come to you now. I admit that I've sinned and I need your grace. I believe that you died for me, that I might have eternal life. Come into my heart and save me. Fill me with your spirit so that I can live for you. I believe that as a result of my confession that I am now saved. My brother or my sister, if you have prayed that prayer with us, you prayed it in sincerity, you prayed it earnestly from your heart, I believe that you've just given Jesus your life. And here's what I want you to do. This is not about church membership right now. This is about having your name on heaven's roll. I want you to write your name in that comment box and say, I want to give my life to Jesus or just say, I just got saved. And here's what's going to happen. A member of our team is going to contact you to help you get on the road to discipleship. Because although salvation is instantaneous, is instantaneous, it is also continuous, which means that you have now begun a journey that you're going to be on for the rest of your life. Some of you would say, Pastor, I'm saved already. I'm saved and I know it, uh, but I've been looking for a church home to partner with. Whether you're here in Daytona, whether you're up there in Flagler Palm Coast, whether you're anywhere around the country, we are equipped to serve you. We are equipped to have you as a part of our family, uh, uh, as a part of our family. And not only that, but also for you to be actively engaged in our missional blueprint, which is to reach, to connect, 
to grow and serve. And this pandemic kicked us out of the sanctuary, but it never stopped the church. So I want you, if you're saying, I want to partner with this ministry, I believe in what this ministry is doing. I want you to write your name in the comment box and say, hey, I want to be a partner of Hope. I would love to be your pastor. We would love to be your official family members here at Hope Fellowship Church, the Victory Center. I pray that this service has been a blessing to you. And it's time to give. It's time to give. Let's give liberally. Everybody behind me is a liberal, cheerful giver. Am I right? All right. So... <laughs> Yeah, these aren't just singers, these are givers. And I, I want you to be, be such as well. I want, of course, you to give what you would normally give God in your tithe and your offering. But also, I want you to be ever mindful that Jesus is the greatest gift of all. And, and no, we could never pay for this gift. Salvation is free. But in your giving today, I want you to be mindful of the gift of Jesus Christ in your life. And I want you to sow a seed today. Um, that signifies your gratitude for Jesus. The, the giving options are right there on the screen right now. You can give via push pay. You can give via cash app. You can send your check or money order to the church at 869 Derbyshire, Daytona Beach, Florida. You can also bring your seed by the church if you're in the Daytona area on Tuesdays between the hours of 9 and 1. Actually, not this week because our staff is off getting some much needed rest so they will not be here this Tuesday, so don't come. We Feed won't even be here this Tuesday, so don't come to the church. Mail your seed in if you would typically bring it. All right? So let's give. I'm going to pray over your seed. I'm going to give the benediction. We're going to worship our way out of here, worshiping the Lamb of God who has come to take away the sins of the world. Um, I just keep seeing and hearing this in my spirit. I want to release this to you. As, as they were singing today, um, I, I began to ask myself, uh, what character would we be? What character would I be this year? Um, I find myself as one of those three magi who saw the star. And when they saw the star, they started searching for Jesus. That's where many of us are this year. Um, we don't know exactly all the details of how we're going to come out, what this next few months means for us. But there's always an indication that God has moved. Don't miss that. Don't miss that. There's always an indication that God has moved. And for the Magi, it was as simple as a star. And when they saw the sign, they started running trying to find where Jesus is. I want to prophesy. I want to minister to you today. No matter what you're dealing with, don't stop searching for Jesus. Don't stop searching for Jesus. I promise you, in the midst of the darkness, in the midst of the sickness, in the midst of the decay, in the midst of the devastation, in the midst of the depression, I promise you, he's already sent a sign. I'm trying to help somebody. I said he's already sent a sign. And the sign is not that he's going to move. The sign says he's already moved. I wish I had somebody that would just say, he's already moved on my behalf. I don't know all the details. I don't know everything about it, but I see the sign. And the sign has me on a pilgrimage to search for Jesus. I'm looking for him. <laughs> I'm looking for him, y'all. I hope you're looking for him. Don't just look for your presence under the tree this Christmas. Look for Jesus. Uh, don't just look for the escape from your situation. Look for Jesus. Search for Jesus. I want to thank this music ministry under the stellar leadership of Minister James Hines for pulling this together. Great job, great job, great job to our musicians, guest musicians, to our narrator, Sister Helen Miles, to our producer, Sister Tasha Landry, to our audio production and organist and all the things he does, Brother Abdi is Felicio. Video production, Deacon Fitz. Let's praise God for Deacon Fitz. And to everybody who's participated today, so many of you have come from near and from far to be a part of this moment, just to minister to God and to minister to you. And so we're grateful for Farron, we're grateful uh, for Emerald, we're grateful for Lucy, my sister, what's her name? Keisha? Keisha, we're grateful for Keisha and to all of you. And so I wish you all a Merry Christmas this Friday. I want you to be safe. Um, I want you to be safe. Uh, these cases are crazy. Uh, be safe uh, and be vigilant. 
So as a family, as we prepare to leave, I'm going to give the benediction. You'll receive the announcements. Let's go back to uh, E-flat and just sing this together. Um, I'll just sing this verse. Sing choirs of angels. Sing in exaltation. Oh, sing all ye citizens of heaven above. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory in the highest. Glory in the Oh, come. Oh, come. Let's adore you. Oh, come. Let's adore him. Oh, come. Let's adore him. happy morning Jesus to thee be all glory given all word of the Father now in flesh appearing oh come come on sing it oh come Say it again. Oh, come, oh, come, let us adore you. Oh, come, let us adore you. Oh, come, let us adore you. Christ, oh, come, let us adore you. Lift your hands and worship all over the world. Let's worship this Christ we serve. Oh, oh, come, let us adore Him. Come, let's adore Him. Kneel down before Him. Come, let's adore Him. Kneel down before Him. Come, let's adore. Let's all adore Him. Come on. Him. Kneel down before Him. Come, let's adore Him. Kneel down before Him. Come, let's adore Him. Kneel down before Him. Let's all adore Him. Kneel down before Him. Let's all adore Him. Kneel down. He's worth. He's worth. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Oh, He's worthy. He's worthy. oh Christ. Christ. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for every gift. We thank you for every giver. We thank you for every tithe, every tither, every seed, and every sower. But most of all, we thank you for Jesus. Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus, the Messiah, who is the Christ, the anointed one who has come and was born to set us free. We worship you today. We worship you today as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And though you did not come into the world arrayed in splendor, you came in the full volume of the book. And you thought it not robbery to be equal with God, yet fashioned yourself in the form of a servant. That you, O oh God, might be given a name that is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee must bow. That at the name of Jesus, every tongue must confess. And so we worship you today. We pray, O oh God, that in this service, someone has been encouraged. Someone has been uplifted. Someone has been delivered. And someone has been set free. But most of all, that you have been worshipped. You have been praised and you have been glorified. So bless us as we celebrate you in this season, but in every season to come. We honor you, we magnify you, and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I love you. There's nothing you can do about it. Merry Christmas, and we'll see you. 
kneel down before him. Let's all adore him. Kneel down before him. Let's all adore him. Kneel down before him. Let's all adore him. Kneel down. Let's all adore him. Kneel down. Him. Hallelujah. Let's receive our announcements at this time. Good morning. We have made it to the end of the year. And I know for each and every one of us, it has been one heck of a year. But guess what? We're not going to end this year dwelling on everything that went wrong. Instead, we're going to end this year with a bang. December 31st at 7 p.m., we'll be having our New Year's Eve service. And let me tell you, you want to make sure that you have yourself situated. If you got to grab your kids, your aunts, uncles, cousins, of course, abiding by the safety guidelines, you just want to make sure that you are logged on, tuning in December 31st at 7 p.m. to the New Year's Eve service. We're going to have a mighty move of God. There will be awesome worship. Pastor JP is bringing a mighty word titled, A Pause for Praise. And I don't know about you, but I want to end this year with a praise. In spite of everything that has gone on, I am ending this year with a praise. So I hope to see you logged on December 31st at 7 p.m. for our New Year's Eve service. Let's have church.